Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 7.33 a.m. Central Time, and I am recording this in preparation for the market day of February the 26th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's dive into the key highlights of today's market report. What do we have in the overnight action? In the overnight action, what we have is not much. In fact, all four broad market index futures are essentially scratch, uh, rotating right around normal. Um, in fact, well, 730 reports just hit so um, probably have started to move from this position take a glance over here at the charts don't see much of a reaction frankly so anyhow bottom line it looks like um, we are in the overnight action not much direction crude oil different story crude oil is down about one percent about 50 cents you also have the euro down about a quarter Bonds up though, bonds up about 0.5 and then gold just um, up a little bit. And the uh, overseas action, you have China up big, up over 2%, Hong Kong up about half, Japan up about 1%, so the Asian markets are definitely very strong. Europe though did not follow, Europe, um, Germany is up about 0.35 and the DAX with the DAX and the FTSE is about scratch. Now, obviously, we just had a whole bunch of macroeconomic reports hit with the 730 Central. You had CPI, you had uh, the core CPI unemployment claims, multiple red flag reports, including um, uh, durable goods orders as an orange flag report. So several things have hit just in the last few minutes. Uh, but in terms of today's action, you have natural gas if you are in that market at 10:30 Eastern and you do have an FOMC member out there tooling around could shake things up about midday so kind of be aware of that and international markets quite a bit also happening today so if you are a currency trader you need to take a deeper look into the reports in terms of volatility uh, obviously yesterday we had some of the lowest volatility that we've had since the first week of December and you see here with the short-term VIX down to 11.64 and the corresponding ratings for the Russell, NASDAQ and Dow also very low for those metrics in terms of historical IV percentiles all oh, and um, pretty much in the bottom quarter with the Dow with the um, highest relative but look at this with the Russell. The volatility on the Russell is absolutely death. Um, there is almost um, nothing left in terms of historical norms in the last 52 weeks for volatility to be taken out of the Russell. So what this is telling you when you combine that with our standard deviation moves that we've had across the four indices. Look at this. We're now nine days back to have more than a standard deviation move in the S&P. Um, start looking for those strategies and plays to where you take advantage of a volatility increase. Obviously, this does not say it could happen tomorrow, and we can go with low volatility for a period of time, but you are far more likely to have an uptick in volatility than and have that as a headwind or tailwind, depending on your strategy selection, uh, than you are to um, have uh, volatility crush and get much lower so make sure that you're factoring volatility into your strategy selections in terms of our daily report um, the, the ZB the futures contract for the 30-year bond and I'm looking right now to see where the volume is let's see here it is still about two to one volume on the old contract you do have rollover on this contract. I expect that this is going to probably change in the next 24 hours, 
but if you are a 30-year bond futures trader, you need to be careful that you stay on top of when the volume flops over to the new contract and that you are trading with volume behind you. Um, in terms of our market trend intermediate term phase opinion, we are currently phase three. We are looking for higher highs and higher lows. And from a portfolio posture, IBD status is confirmed uptrend. GMI index, a six out of six. Uh, and um, our active trader market posture, we are very bullish. As you would expect, um, position sizing opinions for both investors as well as active traders are still at 100% given those opinions from above. Market posture, we've got uh, all, all four of the indices are banging their heads against their ceilings, very bullish. And um, really, until that rolls over and falls below 80, it will remain so. Market timing opinions, the short-term outlooks, uh, one day slightly bearish, three day slightly bearish, and then our uh, regular two-week slightly bullish. I say regular, it's been regular for weeks and weeks. Hedge warning status is threshold level zero, normal risk levels until something changes uh, and brings in more uh, flags well, we look to uh, remain in a normal trading stance normal investing stance in terms of volatility measures um, nothing really um, to get any attention whatsoever in volatility flags notice the distribution days have really fallen off we're down to two on the s p and one on nasdaq Trend base, nothing of concern here to be a flag. Our intermarket risk aversion indicators. This is the first uh, fly in the ointment. We've got four that are now calling for risk off and only one for risk on. So uh, that might be a leading indicator that something is getting ready to roll over. Option income strategy, VIX is inside the acceptable window. So that you have the a-OK -okay for initiating new option income strategies. Cover calls, still the same, slightly bullish. Equal distribution between in the money and out of the money strikes. Put selling, slightly bullish. So again, selling puts, and especially if we do get something of a pullback, uh, you may have a very nice opportunity to sell puts against your core portfolio basket of stocks in which you are willing to own. Yeah, see any other reports that have changed for today. Our sector specific market postures, we are green across the grid with energy uh, and utilities, especially utilities being the weak one. Utilities continues to have significant um, weakness, so be very careful with any utility positions that you have. If you are a value buyer, and you're looking for um, you know buying something that you think the bottom is in you know this is the place to go um, not generally my style I'd like to see that um, we have something of a real bottom and not just continuing to fall but anyhow bottom line utilities is certainly beaten down it's down about 10 percent from its highs and you may find some values there. Sector market posture, percent change. You see the winners yesterday, consumer discretionary energy, telecommunications. Telecommunications, of course, very much in the news today. Um, this is going to be your broadband uh, companies and the net neutrality rules hitting. So we'll see what that does and how those rules come out versus their expectations. You see utilities again getting hammered. So if you thought you had a bottom a few days ago and you've definitely are behind the rock now at down 1.63% yesterday. So kind of a mix here. We look at this. It's um, We continue to see this mix of what we think of high beta and low beta performing well and poorly. Uh, so this is not um, any kind of conventional um, move going on it would seem across the sectors right now it doesn't really speak to you in terms of risk on it doesn't really speak to you in terms of the sectors that were hot in most of 2014 dominating there seems to be 
something of sector rotation going on, but uh, nothing's really followed through. So a lot of things rotate and then shortly fall back and other things rotate. Not a lot of trend moves in the sectors of late. We can take a quick look here at our relative rotation graph. Obviously, you see the hero from 2014, the XLU, big rollover, and is really about to drop out of the upper right window. So um, pretty significant drop going on there. Also, real estate, the IYR, your REIT, um, obviously has also had a big um, rollover. I believe that's the IYR is right there. And... Um, so the question is on that one, it, will it start to have something of a floor and start to bounce as well? But these interest rate sensitive sectors certainly seem to um, have taken quite a hit of recent. Um, bonds have seemingly floored and have come up very nicely off of a long term, I'm talking about 30 year bonds, come up off a long term um, support trend line. And um, that may also impact what's going on in some of these other interest rate sectors. Biotech seems to be, and semiconductors seem to be the hottest of late. But again, XS, XSD, the semiconductor, again, another big swoop where we seem to have a retracement. So this is a 10 week pattern. And some of these that were very strong, but have recent have rolled back question you have to ask with the, all these sectors who um, frankly look to be on the top here are they just correcting and will resume their prior trends or is something more fundamental at hand so always kind of keep that in mind as always we greatly appreciate you liking us on your favorite social media platforms especially the YouTube or you may certainly send in feedback into uh, the Facebook page and of course support questions and other inquiries to support at falconglobaltraders.com more information available on the website including about the three um, trial the three the three live trading rooms and two week free trials in each of those rooms disclaimers as always hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers and then each and every day, we greatly appreciate your contributions and participation with the Falcon Global Trading Community. Good trading and good day.